Truma, makers of the combi heater and iNet system, are proud to sponsor Practical Caravan TV. Welcome to Practical Caravan TV, the show all about buying, owning and enjoying your caravan. This week we've tow cars, new tourers and some top caravan parks. So here's just a small selection of what's coming up in today's show. We're taking a look at a trio of twin axles from Eldis, Compass and Swift. Our Motti tests a funky and lightweight new Jeep. And we drop in on Elm Cottage Touring Park. In the past, it was always easy to tell a Swift Challenger from its Sterling Eccles twin by the front end. The Swift had a white gas locker, the Sterling a black one. For 2017, however, both have adopted this rather natty carbon fibre effect front end, along with these chromed grab handles, and very nice it is too. But of course, you can still tell them apart by the A-frame. The Challenger's is white, and of course, the badging. It's a Swift. Aldi wet central heating remains an option for this year, but there's a new option to go with it, and I can tell that this van is fitted with it. It's called the Lux Pack. It brings a few things inside, but on the outside, it also brings a gas barbecue point, a 230 volt electric socket, and external access to the bed boxes. It brings the kit level up to a decent standard, along with things like alloy wheels and secure wheel lock receivers. It is a shame, however, that Alco ATC is still not standard fit. One of the biggest changes for 2017 is rather harder to see, and that's here in the construction. These sidewalls are now GRP, so no more dinged aluminium. Two layouts have been dropped, the single axle 570 and the twin axle 640, and three have come in, the 560, the 635, and this, the twin axle 645, which features a transverse island bed and an end washroom. Before we look at those, however, I must point out this door handle. It's really chunky and really easy to use. Swift can occasionally be accused of being a little bit conservative in its soft furnishings, but not so in this Challenger. I mean, these warm greys on the cushions aren't particularly going to break any boundaries, but I really like the bright reds of the curtains and the scatter cushions. Talking of bright, check out that massive panoramic sunroof. That does make a big difference to the way this lounge area feels. And that's a good thing too, because the midi hecky behind it isn't the largest I've seen. At night, you simply pull out the slats from beneath the front chest, slide down the cushions, and it makes up into a good sized double bed. These sofas really aren't long enough to be used as singles, except by very small children. Storage wise, there's plenty of room underneath the sofas in the bed boxes and they can be accessed by drop down flaps on either side. Overhead, we've got a couple of lockers, although it is a shame that the forward storage space isn't accessed by a locker door. You have to reach in through the rearmost locker. Up front here, we've got a little pod with a couple of 230 volt sockets. It would have been nice to see a USB point here because everybody's got plenty of devices they now charge using USB sockets. There's quite a lot to see in the hallway here. Above the door, we've got controls for the Aldi wet central heating and the Swift command system. That was introduced on flagship models last year, and it means that you can control various functions of your caravan remotely using your smartphone or tablet. It's now standard fit across the Swift portfolio. It's also good to see a decent sized bin on the door there. And then there's this sideboard with a useful cabinet beneath, all the control points that you need for your TV, and indeed a TV mount so that it's not taking up that storage space. On the other side of the van, we've got a top spec, separate oven and grill and dual fuel hob with a microwave above, sensibly not sighted directly over it. There are a couple of good sized cabinets up here and a decent sink. There's a reasonable amount of worktop, but there's also a pop-up worktop flap should you need it. While we're here, we must point out this rather natty illuminated splash pack. That's another part of the new Lux option pack and it's expected that pretty much all vans will have it. It is a shame there's just the one socket here, but otherwise there's little to quibble about. There's masses of storage space underneath the worktop, and as in all twin axle challenges for 2017, a good sized Dometic tower refrigerator, sited at a really sensible height. The one thing I haven't found yet is the table. So where could it be? I know. 
There's a suspiciously large wardrobe in here, so let's check. And of course, there it is. It's a decent way away from the lounge, but like all Swift tables, this one is nice and light, so that's not too much of a problem for lugging it around. This really is a massive wardrobe, despite the fact that you've also got a header tank for the Aldi wet central heating in there. Underneath it, there's a little shelf for your books, a couple of drawers, and a drop-down shoe locker. And there's another wardrobe on the other side with a shelf and a cabinet beneath. We've got two lockers overhead too, and of course a huge void under the bed for more storage, although part of it is taken up by the spare wheel. We'll come to the bed in a minute, but before we do, I have to talk about this. If you're the sort of person who enjoys entertaining in your caravan and want to look your best to do so, this is probably the van for you. Just look at this dressing table, it's amazing. We've got TV points, but we've also got two sockets so you can have your straighteners and your hairdryer plugged in. There's a big space for putting all your cosmetics and a big storage cabinet underneath as well. And above, well, another mirrored cabinet with yet more storage and a couple of down lighters too. It really is an excellent space. Coming back to the bed, at the moment it's retracted in day mode, which means it's pretty short. I have tested it out and in night mode it is over six feet long, which is pretty good certainly for this floor plan. I do have one complaint and that's that it's a little bit dark in here. There is a window and a roof light, but perhaps that roof light could have been just that little bit bigger. Through the sliding door into the washroom and it doesn't feel enormous for a big twin axle caravan, but it's definitely big enough. There's a couple of cabinets in here, plus a radiator for the Aldi wet central heating. The shower cubicle is a great size, with a couple of useful shelves and an orbit shower head. Illumination is provided by a small overhead roof light and a compact smoked window. With all of the option boxes ticked, prices for the Challenger range are creeping ever closer to some upmarket models from rival manufacturers, such as the Bailey Unicorn. But then additions such as the Aldi wet central heating and the Lux Pack do make it feel as luxurious on the inside as it is on the outside which makes layouts such as this 645 a natural fit. Think of Jeep and you probably think of big, rugged, go-anywhere 4x4s. Well, these days Jeep also makes small, rugged, go-anywhere 4x4s, like this car, the Renegade. In fact, it's available as a two-wheel drive as well as a four-wheel drive to take on the likes of the Nissan Qashqai and the Skoda Yeti. We're testing the 140 horsepower diesel automatic 4x4. We match the 1,548 kilogram Jeep to a Swift Expression 586 with a mass in running order of 1,325 kilograms. That's just over an 85% match as recommended for safe and stable towing, especially for newcomers to caravanning. The Jeep's 140 horsepower engine pulls the Swift from 30 to 60 miles per hour in 14.4 seconds. That's a reasonable turn of pace, although the engine is very noisy if you work it hard. There's also a 170 horsepower car for owners who want a little bit more speed, but that car has the same 1500 kilo towing limit as this version. That's enough for a reasonable choice of legal matches. However, the 60 kilogram nose weight limit is very low. Careful loading will be needed to avoid exceeding the maximum. Despite the low nose weight limit, the Jeep feels stable at motorway speeds. It makes a reasonably fuel efficient tow car too. Towing on a mixed route of A roads and motorways, we saw just shy of 29 miles per gallon. The Renegade handled the lane change well. There was a lot of lean when pushing hard and we could hear squeals of protest from the caravan's tyres, but the Jeep stayed firmly on course. Inside, there are some nice design touches and a chunky look that's well matched to the exterior. The cabin is well equipped and the Jeep's four-wheel drive system promises to take you places that other crossovers would struggle to reach. It's a big plus for anyone who stays at small farm campsites. However, the interior of the Renegade isn't as roomy as that of a Kia Sportage or Nissan Qashqai, especially for those travelling in the back of the car. Luggage space is relatively tight too. With its genuine off-road ability and tough styling, the Jeep Renegade offers an alternative take on what a small SUV or crossover should be. But it doesn't drive or tow as well as its best rivals. It's relatively small inside and it's pricey too. Even so, we can't help but like the Renegade. What it lacks in practicality and value, 
it makes up for in individuality and character. Wow, just check out those azure blue sidewalls. This is a funky looking caravan. It's now four years since Explorer Group reintroduced its Compass brand, and to mark the occasion, it's giving it a whole new identity. There are now three ranges to tie it in much more closely with their eldest counterparts. There's the entry-level Casita, the mid-range Capiro, and this, the top-spec Camino. And this 660 is the flagship. It's a layout that's much like the Luna Delta RI, which was Practical Caravan's Tour of the Year 2016. But one detail I've noticed that is better than the Luna already is this. The toilet cassette emptying hatch is on the off side, so if you've got an awning up, you won't have to lug the cassette through it when you need to empty it. There are some other really nice details too. Up front, there's a new front locker lid with a silver surround. It looks really natty, and it's got a little light, so if you need to get things out of it at night, you can see what you're doing. Over on the near side, there's an external gas barbecue point, a locker to get under the rear island bed, and up front, another external locker, which has just inside a 230 volt socket and a TV point. There's even a little cutout in the door for your flex, so you can carry on watching your TV in your awning. A common criticism of the center washroom layout is that the living area tends to be compressed. The lounge is usually only a four person area and the kitchen is quite squeezed but not so in this 660. This is a massive lounge. There's room for six, even with a center chest in place. It's hugely spacious and wonderfully comfortable to recline on. We've got these wraparound corner bolsters and these rather nice domestic style cushion backs. It's hugely comfortable and surprisingly makes up into a really good double bed. I like the fact that we've got a four drawer front chest here instead of the usual slightly useless drop down cupboard at the front. That's really good. We've got four overhead lockers and it is absolutely flooded with light. We've got three front windows, a sunroof and that wonderful stargazer roof light all the way across the centre of the lounge. The overhead lockers have gone from brown to white, which means we're now in the kitchen area and it's quite a kitchen area too. We've got the expected top spec oven and grill and dual fuel hob and a really generous sized sink, although I'm not too sure about this slightly dated granite effect. There's plenty of storage with four lockers above and this huge locker down here, which also contains the table for the lounge. There's also a trio of drawers. Over on the near side of the van, there's a microwave at a sensible height over a whopping great refrigerator. And of course, every glamorous van should have a cocktail cabinet. Very nice. It's over a sideboard with two sockets for 230 volt for DVD player and a telly a 12 volt socket and indeed a TV point. This fan is absolutely rammed full of sockets in fact. There's two more 230 volt ones there, two USB ones and a 230 volt one up front and in the back two more USB points, a 12 volt point, a TV point and two more sockets. Fantastic. If you like using electrical devices this is very much the van for you. That sideboard is the ideal place for your telly and there's a drawer and cupboard beneath and of course over here you'll also find the controls for the Aldi wet central heating and indeed the control panel for the van. Unlike other vans that use a centre washroom layout, Eldis has split the bathroom across the middle of the Tourer, much like you'd find in many motorhomes. So here on the near side we've got a really lovely large shower cubicle, although there is some intrusion down here from the wheel arch. You've got a rather natty riser bar with LED lighting, an orbit shower head, and I'm very pleased to see a soap dish that can be moved up and down. And on the off side, well, we've got a rather nice self-contained bathroom with a heated towel rail, the new bowl sink with its click-clack plug, and two bathroom cabinets. I particularly like the fact that the system for the toilet has been built into the van, so it's all integrated rather than leaving a big white proud piece of plastic. It's a very nice touch. And at the moment, of course, we are in en suite mode into the rear bedroom, but all I have to do is open this door, push it across, and suddenly we're in family bathroom mode, particularly when I close this. For many, me included, the real highlight of a van with this layout is back here. This is a proper master suite. When visitors come round, 
they don't even have to see your bedroom. I like that without any flappy screens or anything. It's a proper separate bedroom. And it's beautifully finished back here. We've got these proper curtain poles with rather nice lined curtains. And just like the rest of the van, the lighting in this Compass has really taken a step forward over previous models. We've got this rather lovely mood lighting up high and above the lockers. It's a really classy finish. The bed itself is currently in retracted day mode. It slides back by about 400 mil, really generous distance, giving plenty of space around the bottom of the bed, making this room very, very roomy. It also means there's plenty of space for you to sit here at your dressing table, which is a very neat option with a cupboard, a mirror, a shelf, and of course, plenty of sockets, as we mentioned earlier. On either side of the bed, there's a small wardrobe, really quite narrow, but there should be enough for a couple. And over it, these rather nice overhead lockers with their rotating catches, really nice detail. There's a good sized shelf for your cups of tea and your books with three drawers beneath. And I particularly like the amount of light, natural light in here. I've got a window on the side, a window in the rear, and a roof light overhead. Plenty of light, and it means if you wake up in the morning, if you've got a nice private pitch, you can just lie in bed and enjoy the view. When you want to use the bed, you just pull out the bed, and like all Explorer Group vans with retractable beds for 2017, we've got this three-part mattress, which flips into place, put the pillows there, and we've got a large double bed. And because the Compass Camino is wide, we've even got space to shuffle around the end of the bed in the night, should the person sleeping this side need the loo. There's the obligatory massive storage underneath too, although it is partly occupied by the onboard water tank. It's always fascinating to see how different manufacturers approach a similar problem. In the 660, Compass has created a van that answers the same questions as the Luna Delta RI, but in a completely different way. You still get that lovely private rear bedroom, you still get a washroom that's accessible by both the rear and the front, but you lose that huge sense of space in the washroom that you get in the Luna. Instead, you get a much larger living area, which is hugely spacious and really great for having lots of visitors around to socialise. There's a generous kitchen too. If you're the sort of person who spends a lot of time on full facility sites, then this is a hugely appealing proposition. These days, caravanning is very much seen as a hobby for couples, but it wasn't always so. In the old days, it was a pastime for families, and Eldis is keen to get back to those days, and they're doing it with this. It's the new Avante 866, and isn't it a monster? It's absolutely enormous. As you can see from those two little windows at the back, it's got fixed bunk beds, giving it six berths overall. And considering that this is pretty much a lower mid-market van, there's an enormous amount of kit on there. We've got an Alco hitch stabiliser and ATC, which of course is very useful to have in such a big caravan. We've got alloy wheels and secure wheel lock receivers. And inside, there's plenty more to look at. But there are a couple of small shortcomings that I've found on the outside. I'd really like to have seen heavy duty steadies, considering that it's a heavy duty caravan and it would have been really good to see at least one external locker. There is that front gas locker, but there's no other access to any of the internal spaces. Bearing in mind that families seem to produce a huge amount of muddy, wet gear, that really is quite a useful thing for stowing all those wellies and coats and the like. Once you're inside the van, you really can have no complaints about storage. We've got seven overhead lockers, four in the lounge here and three over the dinette. And these massive sofas, well, they contain massive storage spaces underneath. Plenty of room to put all your bedding, and you can access them using little drop-down doors on either side. There's this rather neat shelf up here, and then a front chest, which you can, of course, swap for wraparound seating should you want to. This chest is the only sensible place to put your telly in this van, which not everyone will like, but there's no additional sideboard. And being such a massive space, at night it turns into a vast double bed. Now we've jumped from the front of the van to the very back, and here there's a little bit of a revolution going on. This is the kids zone. They've got their own special little dinette with a two-seater bench and a stool. It's the perfect place for them to sit and play cards or relax, or just to get away from mum and dad. And then check out those bunks. 
They're like sailor's bunks on a ship, little bedroom pods that add privacy without feeling claustrophobic. Each one gets a quality curtain, a light and their own window. And there's a little roof light overhead. I really think this is a special space. Although I find this wall a bit blank, I could really see my kids staying in here, making their own and covering it with posters. But the truly revolutionary thing about this van is the eight in its name, 866. Eight stands for eight feet wide. Now that's previously something we've only really seen in flagship vans, but it means that in the 866, we get two bunks, a dinette, and would you believe it, the other side of this wall, there's a decent sized washroom. The door aperture is a bit narrow, but once you're inside, it really is surprisingly spacious. There's a large fully lined shower cubicle, not one but two bathroom cabinets, and a rather smart new bowl sink. I also really like the fact that there's a little bit of worktop, just the place for kids to stick their toothbrushes, toothpaste, perhaps a rubber duck or two. The only drawback for me is the fact that although there's a roof light, there's no side window, and I don't really see why. Moving forward from the washroom, we've got a massive wardrobe here on the offside with two hanging rails, and it's also where you'll find the freestanding table to go in the lounge. On the near side, there's a microwave at a really sensible height and a huge family-friendly fridge, but I've really saved the best till last, and that is this vast kitchen area. Now, I don't know about you, but when I'm buying a home, I really take the mantra that kitchen is the heart of the home, and elders have taken that approach with the 866. It makes the very best use of that huge eight-foot width to fit in what is a huge dinette area. You'll sit four people, maybe five at a push in here, and I love the fact that it's got a proper fixed table, much like a continental caravan. It really feels very solid. This is a lovely place for the family to sit and have breakfast. Now, on the other side, we've got a really generous kitchen. There's plenty of space here for preparing a meal for a family. It's boosted by this cover over the sink, which you can use as a prep area, but the sink itself is huge, big enough to do a family's washing up. There's also a worktop flap at the end, should you need more, and masses and masses of storage. Three overhead lockers, two large cupboards, and three drawers underneath, plus a pan cupboard beneath the oven, which has a separate grill, and a dual fuel four burner hob. Now the dinette at night can be turned into another massive double bed. You flip up little supports on each end of the sofas, and with an infill cushion and dropping the table, it makes up a double. But what I think this van really scores on is as a family four bed. So mum and dad get that enormous bed at the front, the kids get the bunks at the back, and in the morning, there's no putting away a bed. You all just gather in this heart of the home. Mum or dad cooks the breakfast, passes it over, and we all have a lovely social morning. Now this particular 866 is actually the prototype, and final weights have yet to be completely confirmed, but they're expected to be no more than around 1,800 kilos, which is actually pretty reasonable when you think about what a big van it is. That said, you're going to need a decent sized SUV to pull it, and I'd recommend that you're a pretty experienced tow car driver. But this van is definitely aimed at serious caravanners, and for a family who spends a lot of time in their van, it really could transform their holidays to have all of that space and all of that storage. I do have one word of warning, however. If you've got kids and you've decided you don't want an 866, just don't let them have a look at that kid's zone because pester power is quite a force to be reckoned with. The 35 touring pitches at Elm Cottage Caravan Park in Winsford, Cheshire can be enjoyed no matter what the season. This open all year park has all weather pitches for tourism motorhomes and the access roads are hard surface too. If you're in a motorhome, you don't even need to stay the night. Three hour stopovers are available during which you can empty your van's tanks at the dedicated service point deposit your rubbish and make use of electric hookup and the eco-friendly washrooms. This service costs six pounds. Ralliers can take advantage of the dedicated grass rally field, complete with electric hookup and a rally barn. And if you're staying at the park but don't fancy cooking dinner, you'll find the Shrewsbury Arms public house located around 400 yards from the site entrance on the same side of the road. A park and ride service is also available near Chester for when you're ready to explore the historic walled city. The site itself is dog friendly, with a dedicated dog walking area, 
and visitors regularly comment on the quality of the wash blocks, friendly wardens and the overall tidiness of the park. Welcome to Elm Cottage Touring Park. We are a small family run site in the heart of rural Cheshire. The touring park consists of 35 all weather pitches which are open all year round. We have a lovely family camping field which is open from Easter to September and in the winters we host caravan and camping club rallies. On the touring park we have a mixture of fully service pitches, all weather pitches and gravel for wheels pitches with a grass surround. Our site has a gorgeous little shop locally known as the TARDIS which contains everything that you could possibly need from locally sourced sausages and bacon, free range eggs, Cheshire Farm ice creams and a range of caravan and camping accessories. Other features on site include a lovely fresh herb garden and a delight for all of our guests is our secret little owl garden where guests can sit and relax and enjoy the company of our seven owls. This is one of, us, one of our seven owls. Her name is Izzy. She was hatched in 2004 and she was hand reared in the house and she's very nice. We picked Elm Cottage because it's local. It's 10 minutes down the road. Lovely site, big open spaces for the kids to play. Brilliant weather, friendly staff. Definitely recommend it. Been coming here for six years, Elm Cottage. Um, started off in a tent and now we've just moved up to a caravan. Um, great site, always improving. We'll always keep coming back, basically. It's a great site. And that brings us to the end of another show. But fear not, because I'll be back next week with more top tourers, tow cars and touring parks. Until then, you can keep up with us on Facebook or Twitter and via our website. And please don't forget that Niall Hampton will be along in just a few minutes with Practical Motorhome TV. Until next time, goodbye. Truma, makers of the combi heater and iNet system, are proud to sponsor Practical Caravan TV.